Hey, little girl, don't you get upset? I got some bad news, better call the vet. Oh, no. As the flames go higher. Oh, the dog's on fire. Yeah, we gotta look on the bright side now. We'll save a lot of money on puppy chow. Oh, yeah. I'm not a liar. Oh, the dog's on fire. You know that I always thought he was a good little fellow. Now run to the store, get a bag of marshmallows. Okay, a lot of you missed that. That's real funny. Come on, people, get with it. I don't have cue cards tonight. We will take these cameras down. You Come on, get with it. That dog cost me about $100, now all that's left is a 10-cent collar. Oh, no. I'm starting to perspire. Oh, the dog's on fire. Oh, the dog's on fire. Oh. Everybody! Oh, it's going to be a good night. Thank you. Yeah. I had to go to the eye doctor. I haven't been to the eye doctor in 20 years, man, but I can't see, so I went to the eye doctor. And it was horrible, man. man they, well, they had all these tests that you do, and which were fine, but they had this one test at the end, which I never heard of. It's called the glaucoma test. It's where they shoot a puff of air into your eye. I never heard of that. The doctor's like, yeah, Mr. Hawkins, we're going to do the glaucoma test on you now, okay? What we're going to do, we're going to put your chin in the rest. You're going to look through that hole. And what we're going to do... And we're going to shoot a puff of air into your eye. <laughs> Why? We don't know. <laughs> Just what they tell us to do in high school. <clears throat> like, all right, you're the doctor. Like, put my chin in the rest. I'm like, all right, I look through the hole. All right. Are you gonna do oh! <laughs> Did I do it wrong? Do I have glaucoma? No, you're fine. Here's your eyeball back. It's shot out in the parking lot. <laughs> Folks, that's the first time in my life I had a puff of air go into my body and out of my body at the same time. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to read it. That's exactly what happened. Not they had opened a few windows at the eye doctor that day. Yeah, man. I tell you what, music helps us out a lot. I, uh, I love to sing. I love to sing. I, I sing in weddings, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> why don't y'all shut your mouth? <laughs> I had a friend call me not too long ago. He said, dude, I'm getting married. I want you to sing at my wedding. I'm like, okay, I'd be honored. When are you getting married? He goes, in two weeks. I'm like, well, thanks for the heads up. <laughs> I said, uh, well, what do you, when you want? He goes, well, my friend, I wanted to sing. He fell through, so I called you. <laughs> well, I'm flattered. Thank you. I said, okay, when do you want me to sing to the wedding? He goes, well, when the bride's walking down the aisle. I want you to sing then. <laughs> you sure about that? Oh. <laughs> I said, well, okay, uh, well, what do you want me to sing? He goes, you pick. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking. Half of me's going, no way. The other half of me's like, I can make this a wedding no one's ever going to forget. <laughs> There's a lot of songs that can go well, very, very appropriate at a wedding. We're walking down that. What's love got to do, got to do? That wouldn't be very appropriate. <laughs> heard it from a friend who, heard it from a friend who, heard it from another you've been messing around. That wouldn't be good at all. She's my best friend's girl <laughs> But she used to be mine That would <laughs> Might lose a friend over that one 
Oh, there's worse. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. <laughs> You can't always get what you want But you can try sometimes You might find you get what you need yeah. And polar bears, everybody's freaking out about polar bears What's that all about? You gotta see the polar bears You gotta see the polar bears The polar bears are dying The polar bears are dying Good <laughs> Y'all, I have never needed a polar bear, have you? Look me in the eye, tell me, have you ever been in a situation you're like, man, I wish I had a polar bear right now. That would, that would solve everything. You know what I have needed? A Twinkie. I have needed a Twinkie. Those things disappeared. Nobody cared about it. Let's save the Twinkies first. And then we'll go, and then we'll go save the polar bears. <laughs> oh, save the polar bears. They're not trying to save us. They want to harm us. They're vicious. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you remember the Coca-Cola commercial a few years ago with the polar bears? Just a big lie. They're all in the North Pole, just you know, sliding around, partying and high-fiving and drinking. And we're all thinking the same thing. Man, I'd love to hang out with some polar bear. Folks, if you ever come across a group of polar bear, run. They're gonna maul you and then they're gonna eat you and then wash it down with a Coke. That's what's, gonna, that's what's gonna happen to you, my friend. You're gonna die a painful death. Save the polar bears. Save the planet. A lot of those people these days, save the planet. Folks, I believe God has given us a beautiful world to live on. I really do. We should do our very best to take care of it. That's not a joke. There's only so far we can go. Some people, <laughs> you just need to chill. Turn it down a couple of notches. I understand your heart. Man, I had one guy in my face recently. He was just in my face. This is what he said verbatim, in my face. He goes, man, we are killing the planet, dude. We are totally killing this planet. We only need to be using one square of toilet paper. That's all we need is one square of toilet paper. <laughs> How? One square, what, to dab my brow? What are you getting done with one square? Of How efficient are you? What are you, a Smurf back there? How big are you, Dad? You keep using one square. I'm going to keep wrapping around my hand like a beehive, dude. That's how we do it in Missouri. We wrap it around. That's right. I'm making a white boxing glove over here. I don't want to get anywhere near me. I don't know where I've been. It's gross. One square, one square mile. I just knocked out a Costco aisle, dude. That's how much I need. I'm making cotton candy over here, bro. Understand that? I'm a life-size Q-tip before this session is over. One square. Man, I hope he's not a greeter to church. <laughs> Y'all, I'm hearing some of this for the first time, too. That's pretty funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome to church. Thanks. Fist bump. Okay. <laughs> Man. That's got to be a sign of the end of the times, doesn't it? There will be wars and rumors of wars and people using one square toilet paper. her the shakes it might be soap operas but she says they're too fake it's not the car she drives or what she puts in her hair i realized it's got to be something that she wears yoga pants 
She wears them all day. Yoga pants. <laughs> at work and at play. Yoga pants. <laughs> What's all the fuss? What makes them so special that they keep them from us? <laughs> Well, any normal person would leave it alone But I'm not a normal person and nobody was home <laughs> My wife was out of town and the kids were outside I went into the bedroom and decided I would try <laughs> So stretchy and thin, yoga pants, hmm, feels like my own skin, yoga pants, hmm, where you been all my life, I've never done yoga, but these make me want to try, yoga pants, so soft and so sleek, yoga pants, oh, feels good on my cheek, yoga pants, these are the best, if you're waiting for a video, don't hold your breath. California, I love it here. You're, you're nice. I, I, you don't get, you know, you're nice. You're a nice state. I think the only nicer state than California has got to be Minnesota. And, uh, okay, shut up. Uh, no, no. Minnesota people are like weird nice. Like you can't be that nice. It's like creepy nice. It's like they're hiding something from you, kind of nice. And I learned that, like this summer, I spent some time with our friends in Minnesota. They have this beautiful lake house in Minnesota. I did an activity I've never done before. Probably shouldn't have, but I did. Uh, first morning, we're just getting ready. My friend John's just all pumped, ready to go, hey, Tim, we're going to do it today, buddy. Oh, we're going to go nuts today, don't you know? Yeah, we are. What are we going to do? We're going to go tubing. We're going to tube today, Tim. We're tubing on the lake, tubing. You ever tube? We're going to tube, tube, tube. You ever tube? Okay, who are you, the Swedish chef from the Muppets? Who are you? Hurdy hing tooby. What's Tobin? He goes, Tobin is you lay down on the tube, it's tied to a rope, tied to the boat. What we do is we drag you around the lake behind the boat in the tube. It'll change your life. He was right about that. And I'm an idiot, right? So I'm like, I'm first, man. I don't even know what I'm doing. Let's do it. So I'm like at the end of this pier, and I'm laying down on this tube, got the life jacket on, got the rope and the boat. Here's what I learned about Minnesota people. They're really nice until you put them behind the wheel of a ski boat. That's when they get possessed by the devil and want to kill you for fun. So John's getting ready. All right, Tim, looks good. I'm going to start off the boat. Here we go. All right, Tim. Are you ready to go? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, uh. I mean, water going in and out of me faster than I've ever felt it in my life. I was a tube at that point, ladies and gentlemen. I was a PVC pipe. So I had chewing gum I swallowed when I was five years old come out of me. Like, that's Hubba Bubba. They don't even make Hubba Bubba anymore. That's watermelon flash. <laughs> this dude took off. And I'm just hanging on by the grace of God to the tube. We're going like 100 miles an hour in the wake. And but after a minute, I realized I'm doing it. I'm hanging on. And, and it felt good. And, and I felt the, the spray in my hair and the wind in my face. And, and my adrenals, they were adrenaline. And I started feeling arrogant. I got a little cocky. I don't know why. I started singing that song from Top Gun. All right. To the danger zone. And then he turned. And that's when my life changed. Now I was outside the wake singing, Jesus, Jesus, there's just something about your name. I was singing about Jesus because I saw him. And then I didn't. And some of you know why. Because then we hit a wave. You guys, that's the first time in my life 
I have ever felt my heels <laughs> touch the back of my head. I didn't know I could do that. I was kind of impressed physically that I had that in me. I was like a scorpion for half a second. It's like, watch me whip, watch me nay nay. No, no. No, don't laugh. He whipped my nay nay all over that lake that day. I had never had my nay nay whipped like that. And it didn't feel very Christian. But I hung on to that stinking tube. I had to. If I let go, I'd wind up in Wisconsin somewhere. <laughs> oh, we're just getting started. So Jeff Gordon, he whips it around, goes the other way. I'm back in the wake. <laughs> Here's another tidbit. You ever been in Minnesota? They ask you how you're doing back there. Did not go like that. It's not what you want to do. Unless you want to take it to a whole nother level. You push a red button. <laughs> You go on the other end of the lake, man. He gets the other end. He makes the right turn. I'm back outside the wake. We hit another wave. And I hung on. But then I remember. At that moment, I remember. I looked up. In the corner of my eye, I saw something. Something swooping down from the sky. Like, is that an eagle? No, it's my colon. I believe that's my descending colon descending back down to the surface of the water. Okay, yeah, we need to circle back and get that. I know it's only a semicolon now, but I need that. I need to put that back in there. I knew one of my swim trunks. I lost those an hour ago. They're in a tree somewhere. 